cost of LPG to go up by 40 pesos per kilo from next week, despite the two months tax relief announced by government. Because we shouldn't create the impression that once the price stabilization levy is suspended for two months, uh, automatically the price of petroleum products are going to go down. From the projections, the LPG is likely to go up by about 40 pesos. We'll hear from the LPG Marketers Association and consumers who are asking government to introduce a more substantive intervention. Meanwhile, two transport unions are threatening to increase transport fares by 20% if other taxes and levies on petroleum products are not removed. We have details. Also tonight, the National Communications Authority approves license application of Radio Gold, Radio XYZ and many other shutdown in a 2017 radio frequency audit. Also tonight, there's a desperate move to rescue flood victims in a, in a part of Accra who have been trapped in their houses for as long as two months following consistent heavy rains. The place is flooded. And I can even tell you, there's an old culvert there by the main road, which has been blocked. So all the water from the E-block or whatever come and there's a volume of water over here. It stops there. We'll hear from NADMO and government agencies in affected areas whose rescue teams are working. Later in business, Finance Minister Kenneth Ferrata working on submitting the Japa deal to Parliament again, assuring all concerns of CSOs will be addressed. Um, I think that the Attorney General has looked at it. Um, uh, we have had a few stakeholder meetings. Um, I think uh, the new board should be energized uh, to, review, to review that. We have details here on Join News Prime, coming to you live from our studios at Fanofa Kukumlemle Accra. You are live on DSTV, Channel 421, Go TV 144. This is your home of independent, fearless, credible and impactful journalism. Stay tuned in for details. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast you can listen to drive time personality profile and any other of your favorite shows on joy fm on that page you don't have to miss a show at all joy 99.7 fm radio for discerning listeners Many thanks for joining us. My name is Ernest Mina. Now, the cost of liquefied petroleum gas is expected to go up by about 40 pesos per kilo from next week. This despite the removal of the price stabilization and recovery levies from the, uh, next, for the next two months. The tax relief was expected to cushion consumers, but LPG Marketers Association say it is not enough to stall the increment. We'll hear from them shortly, but first listen to some consumers. Because thirty Ghana, Mr. Bombomodia, Pedro number fifteen Ghana City is my. Yeah, yeah. This year, send a petrol echo. And yeah, easy. Uber top petrol one gallon. Almost thirty. Uber caught three trip. Petro Nasa. And the German air, no, yeah, yeah, German more. Petro. Wong. And the brand air, you took Pacua three hours. Passenger, three nepe, and your four. Three nepe, now so times. Two. Yeah, you call. Mr. Me, a station master. Wong. And yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, bread too much. My senior. Yawana yet TSA. Yes, a forest minister. No, we are blocking the mango. That was Savannah area. Was say, you may enter in Miano, a hobby. And see, it is our seminal. Not just a bidina, a bidia, a man for pepper, a dino, a free south Savannah area. No, almost almost saying Miano, and Timor Muncha. So from that moment, you know, up to date, bidino, a be my view. Nadia de Babanso, a munyadru. Banu body de. Obey be the bottle of a camel. 
almost 750. Yet it's a whole and so the sika. And you'll be on soon a bit me use gas on because Obi wo hoa or boss or to be dear two city one city. Unka sell woman because on a whole day and Bruce are gas on be dear any dear be dear Juma almost 37 be dear in a man a cobbler say five months here in one no until you know no no yeah by a bian so about one semi two women you'll be dear in to my dapo na mo bae them they will say she need be my because be dear nice to say about one day you are near Ube you soon or nigh away, she said, Oman Sansa, ye be dean in Bromono. I saw Munya be dean in no pressure in Tinia de Baca Cra, Laurie Fern, eh, Jacques, ye, Omo complaining to say, Taxes Nini and Bibi, and Tinia be dean in Banas, but Tony Adiri, and I first saw to be dear two city, three city, I bit my Adriani. But she said, I'll be dear ten city scramper in your shay. So you had the uh, charcoal sellers reacting to the price hikes and also earlier from drivers on what this will mean for their business. The LPG Marketers Association say Ghanaians are being priced out of the LPG market. We'll hear from them shortly, but how does the price hikes or reduction reflect other pumps? Uh, let me bring you some details on the figures. And so the price stabilization and recovery levies are those that government says uh, for the next two months uh, we are not to pay for. Uh, so uh, for... As it stands now, uh, if you buy a, a gallon of petrol, the amount you're paying for this is 16 pesos uh, per liter. Okay, so that is what you're buying, that's what you're paying should you get petrol. Should you get diesel, you're paying an amount of 14 pesos per liter. And for LPG users, you're paying 14 pesos per kg. And so that is how much you're paying at the pump. Now, we'll bring you uh, what this means. So this figure has been absorbed by government. And so uh, beginning you know, next week, if this is approved and all the computations done uh, by uh, the finance ministry, you should have 16%, 16 pesos off the amount you're getting at the pumps. You should have 14 pesos off the amount you're getting at the pump. You should have uh, 14 pesos again for LPG users off uh, at the amount you're getting at the pump. Government is absorbing uh, these amounts that you're paying. Now, let's look at the difference that this will create at the pump again. And so 6.52, uh, you know, uh, for those of you who are using, uh, who are buying petrol. Uh, now, if this amount goes off, you're looking at 6.36 uh, Ghana cities. And so you're going to get a liter of petrol at 6 cities 36 pesos. That is for petrol if the absorption is done. And just before we move on that, uh, the difference here will be 2.45. 2.45% is the difference we are seeing. Now, for those of you who buy uh, diesel, uh, and so the drop per price of a diesel, we are looking at it coming down from 6 cities, 52 pesos, to 6 cities, 38 pesos. And you have the difference here of 2.08%. Uh, that is the drop we are seeing should government absorb this. And we are to see this in the coming weeks. Now, for LPG, um, if you're buying it at 7.8 uh, per kg, you're looking at 7, point, uh, 7 cities, 64 pesos. And so from 7 cities, 80 pesos, it will come down to 7 cities, 64 pesos. So this is what it is looking like right now. Let's go on to Zoom now. Uh, we're joined by Gabriel Kumi, who is Vice President of the LPG Marketers Association. Mr. Kumi, uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Join News Prime. And so uh, just for clarity, the uh, 40 pesos increase is minus the reduction, right? Yes, um, good evening to your viewers. Um, yes, uh, from the projections, uh, you know, the next window is starting on the system. And from the projections, we are likely to witness an increase of between uh, 45 to 50 pesos in the price of LPG. So what we are saying is that even if government is able to implement that uh, suspension of the price stabilization levy, which is 14 pesos, on the system, what it means is that even though government will be giving off some, some freebies to consumers, uh, the net effect of the price increase, that which is about 45% on the pesos on the average, and the, 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 the price stabilization levy, which is 14 pesos, is that 
consumers are still going to pay more for LPG come 16th of this month. Mm. Uh, but you are saying that regardless the reduction, uh, the price will still go up and you want some substantive uh, measures adopted by government. There are other levies on LPG. Uh, which taxes would you want, for instance, scrapped? And which ones would you want reduced? Uh, uh, you know, the LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana, over the past four or five years, have been calling on government to consider removing all the existing taxes on the product. Look, a bit of history with LPG, the introduction of LPG will help. LPG was introduced in this country in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. At that time, we were subsidizing the product very, very, very heavily. It was subsidized to the tune of about 50-60% those days. Uh, we got to a time when consumption began to rise, and, and we got to a stage that government felt that the subsidy amount was becoming too much, so government could no longer find the money to subsidize the product. Mm -hmm. Then we went full cost recovery. We did that till about 2014, 2015, when crude oil prices dropped so low. We believe that was a time we should have taken the opportunity to really push up the consumption of LPG. But what did we do at the time? We heaped a lot of taxes on the product. Over the period, what has happened is that the taxes has remained very constant on the product while crude oil prices keep rising. And this has shot the pump up the pump price to where we are having it now. LPG is, 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 is a very specialized product. It's, it's, it's for a very good reason that His Excellency the President has tasked Ghanaians to increase and has tasked MPA to ensure that consumption and penetration of LPG is increased from the current 25% penetration level to 50% by the year 2030. Mm. In essence, the, His Excellency the President wants us to double the consumption of LPG within the next nine, 10, nine years. There's a wisdom in that. His Excellency did not uh, single, he just singled out the product called LPG. He didn't set a target for petrol, he didn't set a target for diesel, he hasn't set a target for, for kerosene. So there is a very good reason why, as Ghanaians, we should push up the consumption of LPG. But, but Mr. But, Kumi, you are asking that government scraps all the taxes. I mean, we are at a point where government is trying to recover from the shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic. Will this be a good time? If at all government is ready to heed your demand, will this be a good time? It, it has always been an excellent time for us to, 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 to reduce the price of LPG at any time. Because, you know... The benefit that this country stands to gain by pushing up consumption of LPG from the current 25% to 50% by the year 2020, far more outweigh the benefit we are gaining from these tasks. Look, Ghana pays one of the highest price for LPG in Africa. And in fact, it's one, our, 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 our price for LPG is one of the highest in the world. If you look at our West Africa sub-region, a lot of countries in our West Africa sub-region are indeed subsidizing the product. They usually move from full cost recovery to subsidize the product. But in Ghana, we've, we've moved from subsidy to full cost recovery, and now we put as much as almost 20% tax on the product. We believe LPG must be made tax free because of the enormous benefit that we stand to gain as a country. As I said, it's for a very, very, very good reason that the president in his own wisdom has taxed MPA to ensure that consumption of LPG is double. Mm -hmm. so, so there is every reason why we should, but one, one, one major factor fighting against His Excellency the President's vision is the price of the product. LPG is a product with an elastic demand. What that simply means is that the only way you can engender consumption the only way you can grow consumption is to take measures to reduce prices so you attract a lot of people into the consumption. So government-owned objective could be achieved. Mm -hmm. But the rate at which prices are rising now, I'm afraid over the past three, four years, we've been stagnating. Indeed, consumption of LPG is going down in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Globally, LPG consumption is on the rise. Globally, we are growing at a, at a rate of about 8 to 10 percent. But in Ghana, but that is not the situation in Ghana. Mr. Kumi, uh, what you're talking about, scrapping of the taxes, these are long term measures that government will have to take very deliberate steps uh, in achieving uh, within the shortest possible time. Is there something government can do to reverse the hikes that uh, we'll be experiencing next week within the short the, time? The, the, the only variable in the price bill that that government has control over is the taxes. Government control, cannot control international price of the 
of, of crude oil or of, of finished product. The only well, the only variable that government control can control is the, is the tax. We don't have a problem if international price will go as high as 10 cities, 15 pesos per kilo, and government cannot do anything about it. Mm. We don't have a problem with that. But our problem is the tax component on the product, and we believe government can control that. And at this stage, no, this, uh, you know, gradually government is, 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 is seeing the need to reduce taxes or to abolish taxes on, 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 on the product. Mm. And for us, that is quite encouraging. And we are urging government to keep doing more of that. We have a lot of faith in the, in the current chief executive of MPA, Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid. Uh, he really understands some of these things. And, and the, the, the suspension you are seeing is, is one of the things that he has really pushed. And, and we, we want to con congratulate government for that. But we are looking at a much more sustained measures mm make sure that the price of LPG is, 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 is kept at a very low level so that the very ordinary well. guns can, 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 can enjoy the product. Very well. Mr. Kumi, thank you very much for joining us. That's the Vice President of the LPG Marketers Association, Gilbert Kumi, joining us there. Now, in a related development, two transport unions are urging government to further remove, reduce, or scrap taxes uh, and levies on petroleum products, failing which they will impose... Uh, a 20% increase in transport fares. The private commercial road transport operators and the GPRTU in a statement insist that these taxes have resulted in increase of spare parts affecting the cost of their operations. Samuel Amwa is a national communications team member of the GPRTU. He joins us via Zoom. Mr. Amwa, I'm grateful that you could join us here on Join News Prime. Uh, you act, you're saying that you would impose 20%, but that is too high. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you very much, my, my good brother. Um, yes, we, we decided that um, the way things are going, the way the, 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 the petroleum product is going up, if government don't do anything about it, we are going to increase it by, uh, our fares by 20%. Um, the reason being that, you know, the um, recent increment that the government did, that is the 13%. Mm. You know, if you could remember, even that time, we were not even expecting 13% to be given to us. Because by then, we were checking on the other component that we are using to run our business. Talking about the spare fires, talking about the insurance charges, uh, talking about the DDLE charges and all that. Yes, government came out that um, because of today's COVID issues, we should just hold on with the 13% and give us a promise that from that time, he's not going to increase the, the fuel again till December. And that after, we'll sit down again and know how to go about it. But unfortunately, we find out that no, the, the prices are still going up. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. you know too well that this is not within uh, the remit of government, except when it comes to taxes. Uh, which is why I would ask you, what are the taxes you hope can be scrapped or, or reduced? Yes, uh, uh, the, uh, some of the taxes, uh, like the, um, uh, well, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, energy sector levy, uh, uh, this uh, sanitation levy, and the others, you, you, you know them. So mm -hmm. those are the taxes, you know, the government brought. And we think that it is, it, it also contributed, you know, um, the, the, the way that the, 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 the prices were going up. So those are the things we spoke about, mm -hmm. that if he did not do anything about that and the prices are still going up, then we have no option than to increase the, the fare you know, by 20%. So mm -hmm. that is what we are saying. Well, well, that is your suggestion, I think, because you know that you have to, you cannot unilaterally decide to impose 20% increment uh, on, on transport fares. Have you officially petitioned the Ghana Road Transport Council, which is the body uh, responsible for coordinating these uh, fares? Yes, um, yes, we said it and uh, we proposed, okay? We, we did not just come out that we are taking 20%, okay? But it's something that we said that, hey, government, this is what we want. If you fail to do this for us, this is our you know, percentage that we are coming out with. Uh, yes, what I want to know, Mr. Amwa, if you have officially put uh -huh. in a petition or drawn the attention of the uh, Road Council to this? Yes, we, we, we've done that. We've done that. And then uh, we started talking about this 
and nothing has been done about that is why we came out with this press release that right. by this i think they got they, it, 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 it will get to them and mm. they will know how serious we are because well, it's like um <laughs> they didn't take us serious mm. well let's see how this goes uh, thank you very much that's samuel amwa a national communications team member with the gprtu now away from that there has been a desperate move to rescue flood victims in different parts of Accra who have been trapped in their houses for, for some as long as two months. At Oyarifa Green Hill, a suburb within the La Inquantanan Medina municipality, scores of residents were caged in their homes for as long as five days following weeks of consistent heavy rains. Meanwhile, a similar situation has caged residents of Ayikai Doblo within the West municipality for close to three months. My colleague Manuel Cranton visited the area today and now reports. It's usual for the place to flood, but it will always recede because the water flows through the culvert. The situation is different now because there's no culvert um, for the water uh, to flow through. I I'm just going to go a bit uh, forward and then uh, speak to them about how they have been living here and this entire street um, are, uh, you know, inhabited settlement. Um, we're told close to eight households, eight different households um, have been affected by this particular situation. We are, we are in the third month now. It's three months now. The water has guarded a certain spot. In fact, here, in front here, there's a deep hole there and it's filled up. So the water st st flows from that hole mm -hmm. uh, around. Mm. We alternate ourselves mm -hmm. to go and buy things mm. for our house and keep it and be using food. There's one of the affected victims who's just leading me into his um, room, which has been totally um, inundated by the water. Because of water now, we see an empty. A man should not into me. Near face problem about and this is a say, said the answer. Now, I ban we are better as a mechanic and swimming in our tree as a metrically near and sign a meeting. I bet a baba better. In Tia Srenipa be a so much more boy and eight teams winning as much you know. Yes, sir, a mom boy. Now, you see a better pa. You don't jump up. I don't come in Libya. Mrs. Saneba, Miss Sandy Benjamin, my Jano Mafia, and one of my Tony. Now, if you are saying we are and some metrics are winning and sana, my boys movie and my packet pack no money in a way. Me, I don't know. Well, he's been telling me that um, his entire room is um, flooded and he's had to wait it out because the more he um, drains the water out of the room, the more the water um, continues to um, fill up the room. I saw about two big snakes and reptiles. Is, is it safe for us to keep standing in there? Yeah, you are safe. You have, yeah, they only, come at, they only come for sunshine and then go back. The other, one, the other day I met one just in front of my, 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 my house. Mm. My, the, my whole place is flooded. Mm. And I can even tell you, there's an old culvert there by the main road, which has been blocked. Mm. So all the water from the E block or whatever come and there's a volume of water over here. Mm. It stops there and it doesn't move away. Then it comes back mm. to various areas. Mm. Almost, I can even say eight houses have been affected. It, this is the drain. But over the deep, about three feet down, that is where we can locate the, um, the old culvert, which has been blocked by the outer lane. Where we go to, it has been blocked by that place. Also, all the water coming over from Akrama or whatever reaches, yeah, it's almost about four feet deep. So that is where the, 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 the culvert is. Now, the drain has covered the top of the culvert. So the drain itself is useless drain. It is not serving any purpose. But, but what, what has been the response of authorities? I, I want well, to, uh, have, you, have you made any attempt yes. to get... I, I met, I met the, the, uh, the, uh, the federal roads engineer. Mm. Nadmo has been here. Uh, the assembly engineer, not yet. But they are all aware about what is happening here. The place looks waterlogged, am I correct? No, it's not a waterlogged area. There was an extreme just in front here, about 10 years ago when I came here. So the old culvert, they've paved the old culvert purposely for that. Mm. But when the contractor was doing the road, instead of, instead of the contractor to connect the old culvert into the drain, he failed to do that. And instead, the, the drain is on top of the, the culvert. Mm. And then we got some estate guys around there. They have blocked the other 
place. So when water hits over there, it turns back. And you, you are the ones that suffer for it we, now. We are the, we are the ones who suffer. Mm. And, and indeed, that's the situation um, over here. Now they've been caged in their houses, as you've been hearing them, uh, for close to three months uh, uh, around Aie Kandablo. Um, efforts to get um, responses from authorities have not yielded much results. Um, for now, though, they are left with, as you can see, um, the old man uh, to be using, uh, you know, sticks and poles to support them as they walk through the pool of water that's gathered here from here at rasta junction at aika and the blue within the Gan west municipality and the greater Accra region my name is manuel Cronting for joy news let me take you now to the ashanti region wawase a farming community in the efija kwabe south district has been thrown into a state of shock and mourning after a 47 year old man allegedly killed three people within two days Kwejo Eduse, a palm wine tapper, allegedly murdered his friend, claiming he saw him having an affair with his fiancée in a dream. He then stabbed and killed two elderly men, one being his grandfather, a day after residents retrieved the body of the first victim on a farm. On him interior of our security decks has more in the following report. The Wawasi community is in grief following the alleged murder of three men within the space of two days by the palm wine tapper. The disease has been identified as Kwasi Banahini, 47 years, Kwabran Kruma, 84 years, and Kwame Kwachi, 86 years. With the exception of Banahini, whose body was retrieved in the bush, the two other victims died at the hospital. Residents are shocked over the motive of the murder. Eduse is said to have told residents he killed Banahini because he saw him dating his fiancée in his dream. He claims he killed Openin Kwabranankroma because he had married his wife off to another man and sees his manhood spiritually. Shockingly, he told police in his caution statement he killed Openin Kwachi, a retired teacher under the influence of alcohol. Assemblyman for Wawasi Electoral Area, Andrews Manson says the community is in shock and grief. Families of the victims are counting their losses. Opening Kwachi was resting on a wooden bench when he was inflated with machete wounds by the neighbor next door. His sons, Ransford Darko and Prince Asmenin, say their father was attacked without any provocation. Back to life. We are mourning our father, our grandfather, our everything. My father has done a lot for me. I call him my father because he takes care of me. He gives me life. There's nothing my dad I can say about my father. He has done a lot for me. He has made me who am I today. And uh, it's so pathetic. Meanwhile, the Mampontin District Court has remanded the suspect into police custody to reappear on November 8, 2021, after appearing in court on provisional murder charges. From Wawasi, for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. 
You're watching Johnny Sparm with me, Ernest Menu, and coming up shortly in business, uh, Charles is here. Charles, uh, what can we expect? Well, you know, we've been having this discussion about the AJ Power royalties due for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. The finance minister is stating the fact that all the concerns from CSOs that have been raised about this deal will be tackled, and we shall be giving you details when we return for business. All right, we have details after the break. Don't go away. Hello, I'm Dori Nando. You can catch up with all the fun on the Cosmopolitan Mix and on all our shows via podcast. Just go to My Joy Online podcast and search for your favorite show and relive those moments all over again. Only on Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Super Hits Radio, radio. Joy 99.7. We're back with business. I'm Charles Aite. The Minister of Finance, Kendo Fayette, has assured that all concerns raised by civil society organizations about the proposed Ijepa Menor's uh, development transactions will be addressed before presentation to Parliament once again. According to him, the renegotiated transaction is with the Attorney General for scrutiny. The deal was proposed last year for government to raise some funds through mineral royalties for key infrastructure projects in the country, but was not successful. Speaking to Joy Business after inaugurating a nine-member board of the Minerals Incomes Investment Fund, the finance minister insisted that the deal has the potential of transforming the economy, hence the decision to bring it back. Truly have we used those resources um, to the level that other countries have been able to do. Um, so I, I think it's reimagining a future in which um, the, the prominence um, that um, gold has to be is maintained. There's no reason why we don't have an LBMC level refinery in the country. Uh, there's no reason why we don't have much more gold reserves. Uh, there's no reason why we don't have um, wealthy uh, men and women who are miners in exploration. Uh, so um, the, the charge really now is to um, is to appreciate uh, the level in which it can help uh, with our infrastructure development, of our transformation, uh, and truly uh, get the best of it. You know, our president has always talked about moving away from the gadgets back economy into value add. So let's understand what the value add uh, for gold is and other minerals uh, and ensure that this new board you know, is up to the task uh, for that. Um, I think that the Attorney General has looked at it. Um, uh, we have had a few stakeholder meetings. Um, I think uh, the new board should be energized uh, to, review, to review that and then go through the parliamentary process. Um, I'm unequivocal that it is the way to go in terms of uh, monetizing our minerals uh, and finding a way to leverage it. And to reduce um, the level um, of um, um, debt that the country has and move into equity. Uh, it has been done and therefore the concerns that were raised, uh, we should be able to address them and move forward, but not to jettison it. Chief Executive of the Minerals Incomes Investment Fund, Enes Nanayal Krantim, who is also a member of the board, has the responsibility of ensuring that the Japan transaction goes through. Take a listen to him. We should imagine, we should imagine a full Ghanaian-owned company um, listed out there, majority owned by Ghana, that is able to claw back shareholding in the likes of Newmont, um, Anglo Gold, Ashanti, etc. Currently, we have about just 10% carried interest in most of these global mining firms. Even if you have a company that we own that is able to claw back some of these shares, I think, I think we'll, be, we'll be sitting pretty um, uh, over a period of time. Let's imagine a Ghanaian company that is able to, let's say, even just buy 2.5% in De Beers in Botswana. You know, we know that diamonds is the foundation of the Botswana economy. Uh, these, these, are, these are things that I will, I'll pray that, you know, Ghanaians start thinking about, you know, instead of the, the uh, sometimes there's a lot of noise without really getting into the substance of, of, the, of the transaction. So just a bit of clarity, Ejapa is fully Ghanaian. Ejapa is not going to have 
any um, um, impact on our, our, on our debt situation. Now, the bulk oil storage and transportation company Limited Bost has arrested a driver and impounded nine vehicles in connection with full adulteration at a Kumasi depot. Eight other drivers are still at large. Management said the police are currently investigating circumstances leading to this incident. The managing director for Bost, Edwin Alfred Ni Obudai Provencal, says workers of the company will be reshuffled as part of measures to curb such incidents. Normally in our operations, when the drivers come into our, uh, our terminal to load, we test the products and we load them. Then the moment they leave our facility, the responsibility of the product is transferred from bust to the transport owner who has to ensure that the product gets to its destination safely. They are paid for the transportation. The moment the product gets into Bost, Kumasi, it is transferred to us again. So we believe strongly, and I'm sure the investigations will reveal it as well, that the, con the adulteration happened when we handed over the product to the transport owner who is represented by the driver. Because their cars are also sealed by NPA. And any time there is a tampering of the seal, NPA gets a notification. So between the regulator and uh, the transport owner, they take responsibility. And the regulator monitors, the transport owner takes responsibility till the final destination. So this was done outside, bust. That is why when it got here and we tested it again, we saw that no, this product was of a different density and so something had been done. We also realized that the color of the product had changed. And that'll be it for business for this segment. We have sports coming up this day. What's up guys? My name is Sammy Forsen, host of the Weekend City Show and Ignition right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, anytime you happen to be busy and you miss out on your favorite shows right here on Joy FM, here's what you can do. Log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. Just go on there and you'll find all your shows on demand 24-7. There you can catch up. Remember, Joy FM remains your radio for discerning listeners. Many thanks. Time to bring you sports. I'm Hans Mainsan. The first half free kick from Thomas Party was enough to see of Zimbabwe as Ghana maintained second spot in Group G of the FIFA World Cup 2022 Qatar qualifiers. Now, having lost the reverse fixer 3-1, Zimbabwe needed results from this game to keep their faint hopes of qualification alive. But it was Ghana who secured a crucial win at the National Stadium in Harare. Suleimana is away from him and tries to beat the goalkeeper at the near post. It's turned behind by Talbot Shumba. Well, Kamaldin Suleimana was always going to be one of the star attractions of this game today. Mohamed Kudus. Ghana have been on the back foot for the last few minutes, but Kudus going for goal. Terrific strike from long range by Mohamed Kudus. Just over the top of the crossbar. About 25 metres out for Thomas Partey. Over the wall and through the goalkeeper and into the net. A thunderous hit from Thomas Partey. And the Black Stars of Ghana have the breakthrough here in Harare today. Over the head of the goalkeeper and blocked on the line. Oh, a huge moment in this game, Ghana. So, two wins out of two for returning coach Milovan Radjevac and the football fans have been sharing their thoughts on the impact of the 67-year-old Serbian. It's by luck. We got a luck to score. And if you meet Nigeria or Senegal or Mali, with this you are one, one goal difference. Can you score Nigeria? It's because Zimbabwe, we have been scoring them with Milovic or without Milovic, we have, we have been scoring them. How many games have we been playing with Zimbabwe? And how many wins have we got? And how many draws have we got? Two. Two games for Milo. I'm not. The game is not encouraging for me, because if you watch individual 
uh, performance is, is, is good, but there's no teamwork. So they should work on their teamwork, then the team will come back to its glorious state. A good coach. I, I remember the day like he was coaching Black Stars. He pushed us to a far place, but due to bad luck at our side, we, we lost. But he's a good coach. See, he just came. He won two like two matches, two games, not two matches. So he's a good coach. We have to keep him. That's what we have to do is to, like just give him the ma maximum support. Uh, he's doing well, to be honestly, because of the Black Star. Now we have him. Now the Ghana football. Everybody is now ready to follow the Ghana football now because we are happy for our first two and second game. So we are hoping for the best. So we are we are much happy for today's game. Now, South Africa have returned to the top of uh, Group G, where Ghana also plays after a 1-0 victory over Ethiopia in Johannesburg. And this is what Group G looks like. South Africa on 10 points, just a point ahead of the Black Stars with 9 points in second place. Ethiopia a third on the table with 3 points. And, uh, of course, there is Zimbabwe um, languishing at the bottom of that table with just 1 point and technically... They will not be able to top the group with just two games remaining. So Ghana will play Ethiopia in their next game and then round off this round of qualifiers um, against South Africa at home. That'll be, all, that'll be all for now. I'll bring you more sports later in the bulletin. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, personality profile and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Kim Jens here, he has the very latest. So, bro, how are ah, you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you too. I like it, your, your dress. Oh, you thank look, you. You look dope, aren't you? See? Coming, coming from you, there could be no greater praise, so no, I take that. Forget any other person, what you're saying, <laughs> anyway. All right, uh, good to be back. Rest of the day. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about today, um, but we're looking at Kwesi Oting. I uh, was talking about fashion and when it comes to gospel musicians. You know, there's this perception that mm -hmm. gospel musicians are archaic because of the way they dress and how they look. He's spoken about it. And also we had uh, James Bond, uh, Daniel Craig's, his very last, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, James Bond movie, actually. Yeah. And, no uh, Time to a, Die. No Time called. to Die, yeah. Okay. But let's start, with, let's start with... Uh, yeah, Kwasi right? Yeah. All right, so Kwasi Oting has been talking about it. He believes that Ghanaian gospel musicians can also be fashionable, look good, and not be you know, looked at safe. They don't know mm -hmm. how to dress or anything like that. People call them a cake. He's got some more on that. Fashion, that must um, go with it. But um, I mean, um, everybody has their own um, traditions and um, religious, of course. I mean, um, we belong to a fraternity that you can't just wear anything, yeah. do you understand? Yeah. I expect gospel ladies to wear some of your dress, you know, like, you see what's going on, it's just beautiful. So, um, um, basically like that, and I'm happy for what's happening right now, because um, gospel is bringing it, and it's bringing it hard, because our platform is uh, beyond uh, Ghana right now, it's global. And so, I mean, you cannot, like, think that um, you are from your community or from a, you know, it's, it's, it's global. So. Um, and, and I'm happy again, as I said, we are matching global standards and um, I'm happy for what's happening. That is part of the reasons why I'm here, to support um, Ghana fashion, to support KOD and, um, and see how far um, fashion is going from Ghana, basically. And KOD, yeah. uh, uh, the KOD, thing, thing, yeah. he's definitely got his swag on. He's always with swag. But, but, but I think that gospel musicians are dressing too well. Yeah, they're doing well these mm. days. And uh, talking about fashion, now let's get into uh, you know, a little bit of movie. Now, Her Excellency Harriet, uh, the British High Commissioner to Ghana, actually put up a private viewing of the James Bond movie that we spoke about at the Silver Bat. And uh, Noella was there to capture it all. You know, I've been wondering what South America would look like if nobody gave a damn about coke or communism. 
famous quote by Daniel Craig in his second James Bond movie, Quantum of Solace. For 15 years, Daniel has carried and played out the 007 character with pride. But after five movies, he's bowing out. What a sick and final one, no time to die. All across the world, the film is not only showing but has also smashed UK's box office records, grossing more on its opening weekend than any other film in the history of the James Bond franchise. It has thus become the biggest movie of the year, a feat the film achieved after only four days in cinemas. It has also broken international pandemic box office records, making a whopping $119 million equivalent to 88 million pounds in the 54 market where the film has launched to date. Okay. In Ghana, the UK's High Commissioner was kind enough to host a viewing session at the Silverbed Cinemas, inviting friends, diplomats and some high-profile dignitaries to share some Bond moments and also watch the film. So I think he's been a really great James Bond. He's made it a bit more serious than perhaps some of the some of them in the old days were. Uh, but you know, action-packed, uh, cool, calm. Yep. Look, he's a fine actor, it, but very see, fine. his fashion sense—he dresses well amazing. too. Amazing. <laughs> and um, thank you very much, Kim. Always, for bro. Bringing us the latest sure. in the world of showbiz. And that's it. If you're watching us on Joy Prime, that's it for the bulletin. We have more stories for you for those of you on Joy News. What's up, guys? My name is Sammy Forsen, host of the Weekend City Show and Ignition, right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, anytime you happen to be busy and you miss out on your favorite shows, right here on Joy FM, here's what you can do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. Just go on there and you'll find all your shows on demand 24 7. There you can catch up. Remember, Joy FM remains your radio for discerning radio, listeners. Radio, radio. Joy 99.7. Many thanks for staying with us here on Join News Prime. The National Communications Authority, NCA, has approved the licenses of Radio Gold and Radio XYZ for operation. These stations form part of the 131 others who have been authorized to operate subject to some conditions spelled out by the NCA board. This was the outcome of the authority's governing board meeting held on October 11, 2021. In a statement, the authority indicated that the beneficiaries include new applications from entities whose FM radio stations were closed down after the 2017 FM audit, as well as existing stations which applied for renewal of the expired FM radio broadcasting authorizations. In May 2019, the National Communications Authority shut down Radio Gold 90.5 FM and Radio XYZ 93.1 FM both based in Accra. Officials of the NCA stormed the premises of the stations with armed security personnel while they were on air and ordered their immediate closure. They were then handed letters detailing the reason behind the order while asking them to reapply for license if they wished to operate as frequency modulation radio stations. Two years down the line, the authority says it is ready to grant them broadcasting authorization subject to the applicants attending a sensitization workshop on the terms and condition of FM radio broadcasting authorizations. In a statement dated October 12, the NCA explained that the provisional authorizations shall be issued to the successful applicants at the end of the workshop and frequencies shall be assigned to the applicants only upon the fulfillment of the conditions of the provisional authorization. The Supreme Court has set October 26 to deliver its ruling in a case accent that it allows a Supreme Court judge accused of bias to continue hearing the case involving the former Cocoa Board CEO Stephen Opuni. Justice Clemens Honyenuga was in July this year barred from hearing the case when the court said the allegations of bias against him had merit. The AG wants this decision set aside. The small and the following report. Joined by his two deputies, Diana Dapai and Alfred Tuayeboa, the Attorney General Godfrey Yeboa Dami moved his motion. He explained to the court that the judge did not demonstrate any bias as had been alleged by lawyers for Dr. Opuni to merit being restrained from hearing the matter. 
He says the judge simply applied time-tested decisions of the Supreme Court. And if the Supreme Court was minded to set that aside or depart from its earlier decisions, the judge should not be the one bearing the brunt of that particular move. And so the matter that was before the Supreme Court was of the nature that there should be an error that was obvious. And so he said that no such error had been committed by the judge to warrant the intervention of the Supreme Court. Uh, the lawyers for Dr. Puni disagreed with this submission. They made the point that as far as they are concerned, Justice Clemens Onyeniga had made up his mind through comments he made while ruling on a submission of no case that he was going to sentence Dr. Opuni and was simply going through the ritual of trial. Uh, the AG at that point in time had some concerns about that comment, but uh, Mr. Kujo, who represents Dr. Opuni, made the point that those are matters that are already contained in the documents which they filed in court. After hearing both sides, the Supreme Court opted to adjourn the matter to October 26 to deliver its ruling on it. And so the review decision is important in that the initial decision was a 3-2 majority decision. The case was originally heard by Justices Jones Doche, A.M. Doji, Amadou Tanko, Lovelace Johnson and Gabriel Puaman. Justice Gabriel Puaman, who wrote the lead judgment, concluded that the test is an objective test based on the principle that justice must be done, as he said that a case of bias had been made. He was backed by his colleagues, Justices A.M. Doji and Tanku Amadou. Justices Jones Doche and Lovelace Johnson disagreed. The review application is being heard by Justices Getru Tokonu and Professor Ashikote, who have joined the original panel. Reporting for joining us from the Supreme Court, my name is Joseph Akable. Now, Assembly members in the Japa municipality of the Upper West Region for the second time have failed to vote to confirm the president's nominee for the area, Christine Bombayene Amadou. John News's Upper West correspondent Rafi Salam, who sat at an event, reports that uh, there was drama and confusion as every statement made at the Assembly interrogated and was interrogated and debated. One needs not to consult a marabou or a soothsayer to know which member of the assembly is a yes or no campaigner. The assembly is sharply divided and they have no patience to tolerate each other's views. Every word or sentence is being interrogated or debated, although the presiding member of the assembly, Ayemadu Kwabina Ibiniza, has not given them the opportunity. When we have a I am not giving election rules. And we are having Ayemudu Kobina Ibiniza took to the microphone to deliver the welcome address. In the middle of the address, he waded into the rules and regulations that will govern the conduct of the election. Besides the Electoral Commission stamp, there is no other mark there. Please, Electoral Commission, do what is expected of you. The members of the assembly rose up with anger and with rapsy voices. They asked him to leave that for the EC officer. Remember, I am not going beyond my rules. As if that was not enough, the selection of agents to observe the counting of the ballots also came up for scrutiny. I would like to move a motion for the earlier polling agents appointed by the presiding member to be disqualified. My basis are that, one, the presiding member is going to vote in this election. Two, there's evidence that the presiding member has campaigned for one side or the other, whether yes or no. So the same presiding member cannot be the same person appointing polling agents for us. Upper West Virginia Minister, Dr. Afiz Bin Sali, all that while was indifferent to the happenings, intervened and call for cool heads. So first of all, it is the nominee who will have to select who she wants to be her agent. All the places we've been, that has always been the norm. Why is it different here? And it is done after the voting. 53 members of the assembly were present and took part in the voting. The nominee, Christine Bombanya Amodu, 
for the second time running was four votes shy of the confirmation even before the results were announced by the Jiriba Municipal Electoral Officer Amwa Francis, some perceived supporters of the nominee demanded for a recount. The nominee rejected a recount, but the EC went ahead. Yes, have 31, representative 9.61. No, have 20, representing 38.46. And one rejected, representing 1.92. Total vote cast is 52. So the nominee did not approve. The fate of the present nominee for the Jiriba municipality, Christine Bomanja Amadu, is now hanging in the balance. We are unable to confirm the nominee of His Excellency, the President. Once I'm here, I'll convey the message to His Excellency, the President. And by close of day, we'll make known the decision of His Excellency, the President. Meanwhile, Dr. Bin Sali has revealed that President Ekufuado has nominated Ali Ibukari for District Chief Executive for War West. Ali Ibukari last week was outright rejected by the Assembly members. He polled 15 of the 41 votes that were cast by the Assembly members. 26 opted for a no vote. His rejection by the Assembly members led to the collapse of two of his close relatives who were rushed to the hospital. The absence recovered and discharge. Rafik Salam, Jiruba. Over 10, 30 selected assembly members in the Bibiani and Yansu Bekwa Municipal Assembly have described as illegal the confirmation of Alfred Amwa as Municipal Chief Executive. The MCE uh, was confirmed in a vote by 19 out of 52 assembly members on Sunday, October 10, at Bibiani in the Western North Region. But the elect, elected assembly members say the confirmation process was fraught with illegalities. Assembly member at the Nyansu electoral area, Jesse Newlove, spoke on behalf of his colleagues. A few members, including the electoral officer of Bibiani and Nyansu Bekwai, maneuvered. And I don't know whether they acted unknowingly. I know personally that they know what they were doing wasn't right. The regional minister allocated himself the powers to become a presiding member by confirming the MCE, which is against the law. Again, I don't know who actually mandated the Electoral Commission to conduct such an unlawful act. The pro these provisions in the acts of the local governance in relation to the standing order, which we all use, has a package for the election and confirmation of the presiding member and the MCE respectively. It will interest you to know that the regional minister arranged to himself the powers and functions of presiding member. Convened a said illegal meeting and presided over it against the clear disaster. The Bono East Regional Minister, Kwesi Edu Jan, has charged newly sworn in municipal and district chief executives in the region to discharge their duties diligently by justifying their core mandate of bringing development to their various areas. Now, he made this call during a brief program to swear in nine out of 11 MMDCs in the region who have been confirmed by their respective assemblies. There's more in the following report by Anna Sabit. In all, nine municipal and district chief executives out of the 11 assemblies of the Bono East region were sworn in during a brief ceremony organized by the Regional Coordinating Council at the Tichiman Bunichampim Hall. 
Bonus Regional Minister Kwesi Edujan, who swore in the appointees, urged them to justify their nominations by executing the core mandate of improving the living conditions of the people in their various assemblies. Honorable Chief Executives, I congratulate you and urge you to discharge your duties creditably to justify your nomination by the Secretary to the President of the Republic. You are overwhelming and just with ample affirmation of the confidence and trust the people had in you, and I expect you to deliver and live up to the expectation. Your command is to serve the people in your various communities. I expect you as chief executives to be innovative, unique, and different in the way you do things. You should explore and adopt the practical use of ICT as a tool to improve the quality and efficiency of the services you deliver to the citizens. He also tasked them to tackle issues relating to security, especially those relating to chieftaincy, tribal and religion. I urge you to always ensure peace, law and order in your assembly. You must be careful and tactful in managing issues of intelligence and security, especially those relating to chieftains' religion and tribal. Member of Parliament for Tishiman South constituency, who doubles as the Deputy Local Government Minister, Martin J. Mensa Corsa, called on the appointees to work towards championing government's policies that would help in breaking the ATA agenda. The NPP government a very crucial time to ensure accelerated development in your localities and for us as a party we need to count on your performance to further our electoral forces. This is John News Prime with me, Ernest Minister. Still to come, former President John Dramani Mahama has bemoaned the number of social infrastructures and economic projects abandoned and left to rot in some cases by the Nanado administration. We'll be back with details after this break. Don't go. Hello, I'm Dori Nando. You can catch up with all the fun on the Cosmopolitan Mix and on all our shows via podcast. Just go to My Joy Online podcast and search for your favorite show and relive those moments all over again. Only on Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Super Hits Radio, Radio Joy 99.7. Stay with us now. The Member of Parliament for Isikado Ketan Jogata says recruitment of 11,000 Ghanaian youth into the security services is not the solution to the unemployment situation in the country. He argues that the NPP believes in the private sector to drive the economy and also create employment, insisting the party must return to its roots. Last month, the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry observed that as part of government's commitment to enhance security and also to tackle the unemployment situation, the government is recruiting 11,000 eligible Ghanaians into the security services. Joe Gatti, addressing party supporters in the Western region at the annual delegates conference, observed that the party has forgotten why it was established.
95. Since I look at the number of radio stations, we do more of So we must go back to our roots. Today, NDC now and former President John Jomani Mahama has been mourned the number of social infrastructure and economic projects abandoned and left to rot in some cases by the Nanado administration. Mr. Mahama was speaking during a curtsy call on the Eastern Regional House of Chiefs in Kofoidria on Tuesday. He, Mr. Mahama, and the National Democratic Congress are on a tour of the country to thank Ghanaians for their support and vote in the 2020 election. This is the third phase of the tour which started from the eastern region and will continue to the western, central, Volta and Oti regions. Governments are enjoined to continue the projects begun by their predecessors. Unfortunately, it will appear that after 2016, the new government that came has either advertently or inadvertently refused to work on many projects that the previous government uh, started. And they are, I can name so many of them. Um, there are road projects, there are hospital projects, there are school projects. I mean, I know in um, my brother Kohumayan's uh, jurisdiction, the famous Abetifi Hospital is crying, crying for uh, continuation and completion. Um, if you go to other places, there are many of such hospitals that have been uh, abandoned. I'm happy to note that the Somania Hospital has been completed but then it needs to be operationalized as quickly as possible. Government says it's going to build 111 more uh, hospitals. If some have been finished, at least let them start working while you bring in the extra 111, or if some were ongoing, complete them and add the 111 hospitals. Unfortunately, it will look like there's more attention in cutting sword for the new 111 hospitals than there is for completing the hospitals that are already under construction. The concerned youth of Asante is requesting an explanation for the delay in the start of construction on the Buankra Inland Port project. Now, President Ikufuado cut sword on the Buankra Integrated Logistics Terminal in the Ashanti region in November 2020. The president stated that financing for the project had been acquired, but 11 months later, there appears to be no progress. Now, Jima has more in the following report. Touring the Ashanti region ahead of 2020 general election, President Akufuado, joined by the Asantehene Otunfo Osei to the second, cut sword for work to start on the Buanka project. The project is in partnership with the DSS Associates of Korea and Ghana's Afum Quality Limited, who will be investing $330 million to complete the project in three years. Nana Akufuado spoke of the benefits of the port. Work is now set to begin after the conclusion of all financial, contractual, legal, parliamentary, and regulatory matters and approvals. The project period is three years. That the transformation of the Ghanaian economy from a raw material producing and exporting one to an industrialized one will be given a huge impetus with the coming on stream of this facility. To ensure an effective transport system to drive the inland port project, key railway projects were expected to be constructed to link the facility to other parts of the country. Work on the port was scheduled to commence in March 2021, but it is yet to start. President Akufuado, during his recent tour of the Ashanti region, admitted the delay when he paid a courtesy call on the Asantehene. One crowd delay, Kakraba, who I fear, and say, who are one of the quiet between a farmer and yellow assassin. So there are several projects, yeah, yeah, in Nansu. But the concerned youth of Asante wants the president to explain further the reason for the delay. Nana Ajenim Boatin speaks for the group. In the run up of the 2020 election, President Ekufuadu, in his description, for the re-election purported to have cut sword for the commencement of Buankra Inland Port and the 53.5 kilometer standard railway line from Kumasi to Obuasi. This has turned out to be one of the greatest political deception of the 21st century. As there is nothing to show at this site almost one year down the line. Meanwhile, 
the group is accusing the NPP government of neglecting the Ashanti region, despite the president's touting of increased investment in the region. From Kumasi for Joy News, Nana Ojima reporting. Close to 500 residents of Nima in Accra and its surrounding areas have received free reading glasses and eye care to aid their near vision duties. This aid given to majority of women who are into hairdressing and dressmaking was sponsored by Vision Spring. The global social enterprise with its headquarters in the USA organized the free eye screening as part of activities to herald World Sight Day, which comes off uh, Thursday, October 14. As part of this year's World Sight Day, the International Agencies for the Prevention of Blindness, IAPB, launched a program to have 1.5 million eye screenings globally. Vision Spring, an active member of the IAPB, is committed to screening some 150,000 people across its eight countries of operations, including Ghana. One of the many screenings scheduled for the country came off at the Nima Government Hospital on Thursday. Majority of the people screened reported cases of ocular allergies, an itchy eye condition which makes affected persons rub their eyes excessively. Also reported were refracted errors, a common eye disorder which occurs when the eye cannot clearly focus on images. This usually results in blurred vision and causes visual impairment. Affected persons received on-site spectacle tests and were prescribed pop-in eyeglasses. The pop-in eyeglass is Vision Spring's novel product that is fitted on-site and provides instant solution to refractive errors. We have conducted a study among the tea pickers in Assam in India and that study showed us that a pair of eyeglasses increases a worker's productivity by 22%. And that is a big number for someone earning you know, less than $4 a day. Uh, for someone earning less than $4 a day, over two years of wearing eyeglasses, that translates to more than $200. So that is a huge in impact to someone's earning potential, and that's what we want to offer to this community at NEMA. Again, presbyopia, the gradual loss of the eye's ability to focus on nearby objects, was reported among persons aged 40 and above. More than 40% of the participants needed reading glasses, and they were prescribed for free. We have screened um, more than 45,000 screenings. We've distributed more than 50,000 glasses. Um, just uh, last week, we completed a uh, screening project in um, Nsawam uh, with uh, Honorable Frank Domfrey, um, his constituency and with his partnership. And we screened 700 people there. The screening exercise was conducted in collaboration with Total Vision with support from Alliance Insurance. The Chief Operations Officer for Vision Spring, Lina Palav, to join news more communities have been earmarked for such screening exercises. What we want to do in Ghana is to continue some of these partnerships that we've built, like right here, NEMA, uh, we have Total Vision with us, uh, we have Allianz um, right here with us, um, then we've worked with Coco Shea. We want to build on these partnerships and really touch at least a million people more in the next two years. Byron NHS, members of the public who may need to visit a National Identification Authority to register for the Ghana card will not have to travel the long journey to the NIA office in Accra. Officials of the NIA say they will establish offices in all 275 districts and 16 regions by end of October. It follows compliance by some complaint by some members of the public of the long queues at the limited registration centers, a situation they describe as frustrating, tiring, and in some cases, unnecessary. The NIA says the queue is occasioned by the compulsory SIM card re-registration process coupled with the limited registration uh, point. Abdul Ganinu is head of the Corporate Affairs Department of the NIA. we're able to establish 34 registration centers actually located in the offices of the GRE across the country. Yet there are long queues, but the education together with the National Communication Authority that we are sending out to the Ghanaian public is that this same card registration process for a period of six months, there's no need to panic. 
the requirement for the SIM card registration is the Ghana card yet. And the NIA has assured that by end of October, every district in Ghana will have an NIA office. Many have also been calling out the authority to scrap the fees associated with the registration process. Mr. Abdul Ghaniyu says that is practically impossible. The are centers that I alluded to. Registration over there is free. So he can go to any of them, register for the Ghana card for free. But if you choose to come to headquarters, you pay the 250 Ghana. The law is the law, and we can only work with that until there's an amendment to the law. And, and there should also be the appreciation that this project has a revenue model, and the premium registration and the fees that are charged are in line with that particular model. The first time registration for the Ghana card is free for all Ghanaians. And I'm sure you got your Ghana card for free as well. I got mine for free. And that applied to every Ghanaian. But if we were to be charged per Ghana card per citizen, that would have been way, way, way beyond the capacity or the reach of most Ghanaians. You're watching Joy News Prime with me, Anas Mino. Charles IT is standing by with some more business stories after this break. Hello, I'm Dori Nando. You can catch up with all the fun on the Cosmopolitan Mix and on all our shows via podcast. Just go to My Joy Online podcast and search for your favorite show and relive those moments all over again. Only on Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Of course, you're welcome to business. I'm Charles Aichi. The finance minister, Kano Ferreira, has expressed confidence in the policies by the Bank of Ghana to keep the local currency strong. He has lauded the decision by the central bank to boost reserves through purchase of gold from the domestic market. He spoke to journalists after swearing in the board of the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, chaired by renowned lawyer Philip Addison. Talk about the CD. I know analysts have predicted that uh, the CD will perform better in the last quarter. Are you hopeful about that and what are you hinging that on? I don't know. I mean, I think we've all watched um, 2020. Um, difficult year and the CD held its own. Uh, this year, I think we have um, some 11 uh, odd billion in reserves, so almost five months. It never happened before. Uh, so obviously, the central bank is doing something right. We are trying to manage our expenditure. And, and really the movement towards creating Ghana as a regional hub, you know, will lead to hopefully uh, better exports and um, import substitution uh, for us. So at this rate and the uh, policy decision to also begin to acquire uh, gold as reserves, you know, will further consolidate, you know, the strength of the city going forward. Um, so it's all an ecosystem that is being put together. Sometimes it looks haphazard, but there's a reason for the madness. And the numbers do just show that we are going in the right direction. So we are confident about that. Now, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority says it is on course to achieve in its 2021 revenue target of about 17 billion cities despite the impact of COVID. Customs Ex Excise Commissioner of Customs, that's Ken Okojo Damwareta, believes that the last quarter can make it up. Uh, he was addressing the media after visiting various customs offices at the Tema Port. We have more in this report. The division of the Ghana Revenue Authority experienced two major challenges last year. The first challenge was the impact of COVID-19, which led to the revision of its initial target of about 13 billion Ghana cities to about 10 billion Ghana cities. The other challenge was the introduction of the integrated customs management system, which was replacing a system manned by Ghana Community Network Services, GCNet, and West Blue Consulting. Commissioner of Customs, Kenel Kujo Damar Retard says, despite these challenges, personnel worked hard to exceed 2020 targets. Realistically, it wasn't going to be possible for us to achieve the original target. But even that, if you took the original target and what we collected, it meant the deviation was not much. So which also shows that we really did very well last year. Because it, don't forget, it was the COVID year, and at the same time, we were starting a new system. We had some challenges with the implementation, and in spite of all that, we still managed to exceed our tech. So that was. This year, 
customs all together, we are supposed to collect close to about 17 billion. Okay. And um, as at now, all together, we are lagging behind around about 7%. Meanwhile, Colonel Kwejo Damar retired says, although they are behind in the third quarter collection, it is possible to meet 2021 targets. But with us, Tema really matters. Tema usually will collect something around 80% of the total customs collection. So if Tema is performing well, it means that customs will be performing well. And by uh, Tema's performance, we are just behind up to September, from January to September, about 5.8%. Looking at it in terms of real figures, just around about 580 something million, uh, it is not too much beyond us. And as the sector commander was explaining, if we manage to collect 1.3 billion tema each month for the last three months, we certainly will exceed our target. Sector commander of tema collection, Assistant Commissioner Julius Kantum, is hopeful with efficiency vigilance and supervision, they can achieve 2021 targets. Habitat Limited has announced a special lifeline package for civil servants under the Plant City Extension Project. That's the uh, Rent to Own scheme. Speaking at Amida Swari, project manager of the Plant City Extension Project, Dano Ohin Edu said the Rent to Own is an income responsive housing targeted at easing the pressure on civil servants and government workers to acquire homes. Rent to Own is a hybrid workable housing delivery system pivoted on making good planning and engineering for Ghanaians, inclusion of low-income groups, and maximizing spatial development for current and future needs. Addressing the media at the launch of Civil Servants Special Lifeline Package, Project Manager of Planned City Extension Project, Daniel Ohene Edu, explained that the project comes in two options at Ningo Pram Pram district in the greater Accra region. Under getting this whole model is the cooperative. Now we have two options for the civil servants. If you can afford 550 Ghana cities a month, you can be able to get a two-bedroom semi-detached house. If you can, sorry, two-bedroom semi-detached house. If you can be able to afford 770 Ghana cities a month, you can be able to afford or give yourself a three-bedroom semi-detached house. Mr. Edu further indicated that in the case of any misfortune, such as loss of income, an accident, or death, his outfit will give a customer in good standing a three-year respite to recover. However, one can move in in the fourth year after a down payment of 3,000 Ghana CDs. If you apply now, you are going to move in in four years. You are going to move in in four years, by which time you would not even have reached your 20% which the other packages, you know, do. You're moving in in four years because your 20% will be somewhere around the seventh month of the eighth year. And then, is there any government support? No. Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, Personality Profile, and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM, radio for discerning listeners. Thanks for staying with us. Now, this year, we'll see the Ghana Football Association put forth the Division One Super Cup for the first time. The maiden edition of the competition will be played by the top-rated sides in the just-ended um, Division One league season, and it will start from tomorrow, 13th October. Two venues, the Medina Astro Turf and the Magdan Park, um, is uh, 
where the action will take place here in Accra. And I'm glad to say that we have the Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, Mark Ado, joining us via Zoom to look ahead to this novelty competition. Thank you very much, sir, for joining me. And first of all, uh, we've seen the Black Stars played, and I'm sure you're happy um, about the performance and the results. Uh, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Um, first of all, uh, good evening to your esteemed listeners. And to answer your question, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, you can see my smile. Um, it's a difficult um, uh, encounter, as you saw, and to win uh, both uh, games, mm. to me, it's a, it's, a, it's a great achievement for the team. And special thanks to all the people that a lot of people don't see, the, the technical team, the medical staff, the, um, the Ministry of uh, Sports and uh, the financiers, the, um, the management of the, of the team itself, as well as uh, all the other people behind the scenes that nobody sees, the, the people that carry the balls to the, to the stadium, the support staff, Great thanks to all of them that made it. And of course, to the, the great fans uh, in this country that supported the team in the difficult times um, for, me, for helping us you know, uh, win these two games. Now we have two more to go. And I think with the same level of support, we'll be able to accomplish uh, our objective of going to Qatar next and, year. And real quick, you're part of the committee that you know, um, selected head coach Milovan Rajivac. After two games, do you feel that that decision to bring back Milo has been vindicated? Well, I think our mission was very simple. Um, one of some of the key criteria we looked at in trying, in looking for um, a manager for the team was to uh, was find somebody who has the pedigree, um, somebody who, who, had, who can uh, reconstitute a team or restructure mm. a team. And mm. Milo came top in those categories because we, it's not a, for the lack of talent in this country. It's just a matter of organizing the team, knowing the right uh, structure to put in place and getting the right players, getting the right people around uh, the team and, and how to organize. I think if you get, if you get those right and with a good managerial capability, you'll be able to, to handle the Black Stars. Then some of those areas are where I think, in my view, that we are lacking from, from the local side. But in the general scheme of things, um, I think it's too early, mm. but I, I, I'm encouraged and, you know, I'm cautiously encouraged that we are on the right path. That's the most important thing. Brilliant. And, um, I mean, um, the Division One Super Cup is the maiden edition we've seen um, all the other competitions associated with the, the Premier League and, um, of course, the um, lower division, you know, competitions. We have the FA Cup. We know what is made of. We know what to expect. What can fans expect from the Division One Super Cup? I think um, for the first, the first, uh, this is actually this is our median um, uh, competition that we are launching from the FA, headed by. As you know, our president, Mr. Simon Kerr, Kerr Simon Okraku, um, and there's, of course, the executive uh, council which put this together. And the, the intent of this is to uh, lay the ground for uh, for the, the whole country of fo the football fraternity to see the quality of play of some of the, uh, the teams that normally they don't get the chance to see. Um, also, it's also an opportunity for all the teams to use this as a, 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 a pre-season um, engagement towards the preparation for the start of the league. So, and more importantly, you know, with three of the teams, uh, mainly uh, BBNE Gold Stars, uh, Cry Lions, and Real Terminal United, have all qualified to the, the Ghana Premier League. So right. it's a good opportunity also for people to see the, the, what to expect in the Premier League. There's another thing which people, a lot of people maybe don't pay a lot of attention to, but mm. if you think about it, Division One is the is the feed start for the national teams, you know, both in the under 20 and also the Black Stars team B. If you look mm. at a player like uh, uh, Shaku, um, Fatal, who Fatal. plays for the national team, he's made in, he's made in uh, um, uh, uh, called to the national team. He was he actually played last time he played Zimbabwe. You see the quality of stars. So, 
it's uh, to me it's a, it's a good opportunity it's going to be a lot of fireworks a good talent you know for for people to 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 see the kind of talent that's across the country for the first time all of the top teams all in one place and i think it will be an exciting tournament for them, so people should pay attention and should come and support it i mean one of the questions that pop up when these competitions come about obviously is, is a small matter of what is in it for the participating clubs just in terms of um, the package is for the winners what are we looking at well okay so we we through this competition what we did was we've been able to get uh, some support from our sponsors. Uh, QIC, Quality Insurance Company, is our headline sponsor who, together with uh, Melcom, uh, Ghana Tourist Authority, and, and TCL, have all come in to support. I mean, mm -hmm. since also just, you know, remember that since it's a median competition, a lot of times people don't know what to expect. So we've been able to pull some resources together, together with the FA, mm -hmm. and the, the winning, the first three teams are definitely going to get a package. We've also presented uh, participation fees to the to the clubs in addition okay. to transportation for them to uh, to to make it to Accra. So we it's, you can say it's a pilot, you know, of of a competition we're starting. But the intent is that to continue every year and make it big and grow the the audience and grow the uh, uh, the fans and make it bigger every year so that it's it's come to stay. Is that to say that we could see it being expanded in the coming years? As in terms of the participation, it's it, it's it has to, it's looking looking forward. It's kind of kind of hard mm. to tell at this moment, but uh, at this moment it's eight uh, as to whether to go to twelve, and it's another it's another thing. Especially also, just don't don't forget that in the this is probably the last year we are playing the division one in this format because mm. of the uh, the mandate that we have from Congress to restructure. The Division One uh, football, to, together with the where Premier League uh, intend to also go autonomous after this year. So, uh, who knows? But um, if it, whatever it is, it will it will grow, and it will be it, if it, if it if it does grow, it will it will make the competition a lot more better in, in that in that sense. And I'm grateful that you could join me. I'm Marcado is the vice president of the Ghana Football Association, speaking to us about um, the new competition the Division One Super Cup. And that brings the curtain down on sports here Thank on you. Joy News Prime. You can read more at myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. I am Hans Mensa Ando. For Joy News Prime, many thanks for your company. you find more stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Up next is PM Express with Evans Mensa. We're having a conversation on the impending price hikes in four prizes. You want to stay with speaking to all the stakeholders and how this will affect you. Stay with us. Joining.